All right. So we were talking about the different types of professional and past student examples that use cartoon jumbles at the end of the last video. This is based on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and it's just based on line quality that Arturo Herrera thought was interesting. This is based on promoting a band and using a portrait of the two band members and layering them on top of each other so it looks like there's more members. Or just making a pleasing design and then integrating it with some script-based type design. And then this kind of mixes Snow White line art with abstract expressionist drips to, to make it kind of more in the fine art realm than the, the character design commercial art realm. What Arturo Herrera did was follow a theme with that first show at the Armory show of a favorite cartoon of his, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the first animated feature film. So maybe you want to use that theme for your line art. What I have used in past semesters to support our library is a band book theme. And so what I have here are titles from our campus library. This doesn't mean that our library doesn't carry them. In, in our case, it actually means that our librarians make sure we're always carrying them. <laughs> but they are the books that have been called on to be removed from the collection by various groups and entities. And this is something that libraries are always dealing with, kind of the censorship of materials. What's interesting is you might have read some of these. You know, you might have read The Kite Runner. You might have read The Lord of the Rings, The Lord of the Flies, Catch-22, uh, one of my favorite books, Cat's Cradle, Call of the Wild, like all of these. Black Boy, all of them are, are pretty interesting and thought-provoking books. So if there's one on there, if you think you want to do this as a theme that that you want to explore, you can do that. One of the, the newest ones is The Hate You Give, which is just a couple years old, that now a lot of is ending up on a lot of these banned book lists. And so that's what my demo in here is on. It was deemed uh, anti-cop, and it has profanity and drug use and sexual references. And so it can be a good idea to research your theme and know why it was banned. But the way we do research in a digital art class for compositing is we need to find images right, that communicate the things we want. You are not allowed to make your own pixels for this project. You have to modify other people's pixels. So there's a few ways you can do that. One is using Chrome. We're going to click on autodraw.com. It does work with Safari, but it can be glitchy. And autodraw is an actual Google product. And I just said you can't make your own pixels. So it's going to be weird that we're using a drawing program. But if we use this autodraw pencil, I'm going to do a Hawaiian shirt theme, because that's what I'm wearing today. So I'm going to try to draw a palm tree. And you don't need to draw it particularly well. It's kind of like that Mona Lisa painting exercise. Don't take too long. So I draw something I think looks like a palm tree. As soon as I close it or stop drawing, and you can do it with a tablet, you can do it with your mouse, it will give me suggestions of what I meant to draw. <laughs> and what's nice is when Google started this project, they paid <laughs> illustrators and licensed their work for a full buyout of these line art illustrations. A full buyout means that it's not a usage rate where that artist gets paid every time it gets used. Instead, Google owns these images, and Google did that so it could make them Creative Commons open for all of us to use. So you are free to use these images that come up in Google Draw, even though they're limited, but you can use them for anything you want. Does that make sense? So the idea is you want to draw something, you try to draw something, this will give you a slightly cleaner version of that thing you're trying to draw. The problem with it is there's not a really intuitive way to save your work. So I'm going to show you the best way that helps us understand resolution a little bit. I want you to use Command Plus if you're going to go this route just to make your image a pretty good size on your screen. There's a reason we use large monitors here. Your monitors are actually high def monitors. They're about 120 pixels per inch where a regular monitor would be 72 pixels per inch. They actually might even be more than that because these are new monitors. We're going to do what's called a, a targeted screen grab. This is the most complicated 
keyboard shortcut we're going to learn for the semester. And it's the only three key short, shortcut that's on the final exam. So to do a targeted screen grab, you hold down command, which on a PC is control, but it's next to your space bar on your Mac keyboard. You hold down shift with command. So command shift, and then you're going to hit four. Command shift four. When you do that, your cursor changes from just crosshairs to what looks like a sniper scope with like crosshairs and a little circle. And it will show you actual uh, pixel counts next to it. Then you drag and drop the box you want to grab. And it will basically take a photo of the screen resolution of the thing. And if you have your sound on, it will make a cute little photo sound. And it will put it, after it processes, right onto your desktop. It will always save it as a PNG, which is a file format we will learn about. It's an online file format. It will work for submitting. Why is screen grab so important to know as a designer? It requires no downloading of anything. If you want to grab something that's from a film still, you can screen grab it. If you want to grab something from a program that doesn't allow you to download images, if you can see the image, if it shows up on your computer, on your monitor, you can screen grab it at that resolution. I'm going to be teaching you all the ethical ways to use these other people's pixels. But screen grabbing is one way you can get to it. The problem is screen resolution is not good enough for print resolution. But it's good for screen-based uses. So that's one way you can get some line art. So I'm going to try to get them from multiple places. So let's do that again. I can then click on it and I can hit delete because I want to make a new clean image. And I can draw something else that might be on Hawaiian shirts, like a thatched roof hut. And I'm just using my mouse. And notice I let go and it gave me suggestions. And as I add to it, it will modify the suggestions. And sometimes you can draw a little bit too well for this. <laughs> And it will get confused about what you mean. I, got, I have some structures, but they might not have a thatched roof hut. But they have plants, and that might be good. So I might do a screen grab of that. What's the three key shortcut for a screen grab that's targeted? Command Shift 4. Command Shift 4. It's, the best thing you've ever taught me. it's a wonderful thing. Now, PCs don't have that, but they have a print screen button. So at any time on a PC, you can grab the entire screen. Macs have that too. That's Command-Shift-3. Command-Shift-3, you don't target it. It just grabs the entire screen. My problem with the full screen, screen grabs is they get really confusing, and I'll show you why. Once that processes, it's also a lot bigger than I need it to be. And I open it up. And then I start wanting to click on my internet browser and nothing happens, right? So that's why I like targeted screen grabs. Command Shift 4. Okay, so I've got two things. This assignment, in order to meet all the requirements for this exercise, you have to have a minimum of five line art examples that you are merging together. I also said they needed to be black line art, right? Notice that the default for auto draw is not black, it's blue. You can change it to black. And so now the next thing I do will be black. But I'm also going to show you how you can change everything to black. And this time I'm going to, I want some sort of structure. So I'm just going to draw a house. And this, this works. There's also a log cabin. Ah, oh, here we go. You see, my thatched roof was, was too detailed. So just by drawing a basic house, it gives me some options that might work a little bit better. Now you'll notice some of these line art styles are very different. That's because they hired multiple illustrators to do them, just like the Google Doodles. In fact, I think a lot of them are the same illustrators. And Google's actually a pretty good client to work for if you're a freelance illustrator. They pay well because they buy the stuff out entirely so that they can use it for whatever purpose. And when you sell your image usage rights for a full buyout, it's usually about 
10 to 100 times the price you would get for doing it as a standard usage fee. So an album cover that you would do for $300, you know, as a limited usage right, would be around $3,000 to $30,000 as a full buyout. All right, which one do I want? I'm just going to go with this one. Okay, and then what's the shortcut? Command, shift, four. four. Okay, those are all on my desktop. This is just one way that you can generate line art content that you have the rights to use. Another way is to use my favorite site, which is pixabay.com. Pixabay.com is a is an image search like Google image search, except everything on it has been curated for quality and for, for resolution. So everything's gonna be big enough here for print quality resolution. And everything you put on here is royalty free, which means it's all Creative Commons open. Creative Commons open is basically the same thing as public domain, except for all the Creative Commons that's something where the artist decides what rights they are retaining. But if it's Creative Commons open, they're retaining no rights to it. So it is a good idea to log into Pixabay. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to download the highest resolutions. You don't have to pay anything. You just have to, like Adobe, use a, oh, you can use your Gmail. You can use any email address. And then just like signing into Adobe, you'll see your little icon and profile here. That does allow you to upload stuff. So I have donated some images to be used from the first assignment, something we'll, we'll do in a couple weeks. And I, I donate these, and this one has been incredibly unpopular. I have no idea why. But this has only been downloaded once for use, my little Candyland one. But then some of them have been downloaded you know, over a 1,000 times and used. And it's kind of fun because when you um, when you give something, you know, then people comment on it, and then they are actually encouraged to to give you a little bit of money in your PayPal. They don't have to, but they can offer you, and your work can be used for things without you getting paid. And isn't that great? Isn't that what everyone wants? So I just do it with limited things. But the benefit of contributing 10 or more pieces to Pixabay means that they don't advertise to you anymore. <laughs> and I try not to have advertisements on these YouTube videos from other companies. And I don't have advertisements from my entity as well. Because these YouTube videos are Creative Commons open. Anyway, how does this work? I want um, a thatched hut. So I'm going to type that in. The problem is it's going to give me lots of Creative Commons open, royalty free, high resolution examples. But there's going to be photographs, there's going to be full color illustrations, there's going to be line art, there's going to be vectors even. So I'm going to now, whenever you do an image search, I want you to learn how to, to edit the parameters. It's like doing a library search and finding the thing you want. So first of all, I want to not look at all images, I want to look just at illustrations. I want this to be hand drawn line art. And then I want the color to be just black and white. And then apply. And if nothing shows up, then I need to revise my search parameters. So if I just look for hut with those parameters of illustrations that are black and white, I can also give it a specific pixel dimension, but I don't need to do that here. Then I can scroll through and see if there's any that are interesting. Maybe more interesting than what I got from, from AutoDraw. Yeah, this one's pretty interesting. So I'm going to click on it. If it's interesting, you click on it. And then you'll see your download options. Okay, these are important. We're going to learn more and more about this. This image is actually a vector image which means if I download it as a vector, it's going to come in what's called a standard vector graphic format, SVG. And I would have to convert it, bring it into Photoshop, rasterize it. I'm not teaching all of you that yet. But because it's a vector, it can be any resolution it wants. So instead, what I want you to find is the largest, the largest resolution 
that is a pixel-based